What's up friends, glad you're back. Today I wanted to run through everything that's in my pack for fall backpacking in Western Washington. I'll tackle this in order of pack, shelter, sleep, clothing, food and water, hygiene, ditty bag and electronics, and miscellaneous. All right, let's get to it. My pack is a Mountain Laurel Designs Exodus in DCF. It's a 55 liter pack that has an extra long extension collar, so it has a ton of room if I need it, but I can also roll it down into a very compact package if it's not fully loaded. I rarely fill it all the way, but I like knowing that I have the extra space for a bear canister or extra insulation when it gets colder. All of my stuff that needs to stay dry goes in this super quiet Nylofume pack liner. And around my waist goes my Hightail Designs fanny pack, which I use to stash things that I don't want to lose, like my car keys, or things that I want quick access to, like my phone. So in terms of shelter setup, my current tent is the Z-Pax Plex Solo. I was looking for something that offered a more repeatable setup process, as well as better splash protection in established campsites, which often have poor drainage. Under my tent goes a Tyvek ground sheet that I cut because I'm not made of money and I can't afford to shred my tent floor. Along with the tent goes one trekking pole, which I rarely use for walking, but it does come in handy from time to time. All of my stakes are in my MLD stake sack, and I take seven MSR groundhogs for the main tie-out points and four Vargo titanium shepherd hooks for the panel poles. The tent only requires six main tie-out points, but the seventh groundhog is a backup just in case I bend one, and I also use it when I hang my bear bag because it's easier to pull out of a clove hitch than a stick. The core of my sleep system is my Z-Pax 20 degree classic sleeping bag. Since I toss and turn a lot while sleeping, I need to get an extra wide quilt in order to keep drafts out, and that sort of defeats the whole purpose of going with a quilt in the first place, which is to save weight. I find that this option works really well for me, and I can still quilt it out if I find myself getting a little bit too warm. My sleeping pad's a Thermarest NeoAir X-Therm, and it's got an R value of like six or something like that. So it's kind of overkill for most conditions, but it's not really that much heavier than the regular Thermarest NeoAir. So I never really got around to spending the extra 200 bucks to save like a few ounces. Maybe I'll round out my pad selection with an Uberlite at some point, but right now it's not really a priority. And then last, but definitely not least for sleep, is my MLD stuff sack pillow. This thing's super comfortable. I may end up replacing it with an inflatable pillow though at some point here. I don't really love inflatable pillows because they tend to hurt my neck, but the issue is as we move into the rainy season, I might not have any dry clothes to actually stuff into this pillow to make it work. The Thermo SD seat's coming back as we enter the rainy season. It was totally fine to leave out during the summer, but it's nice to have a relatively warm and dry place to sit down or to change on once the rain starts to fall. And on to clothes. As a base layer I like to wear my Patagonia sun hoodie. We still get some sun during the fall but more than anything it just makes a nice breathable base layer to wear underneath my warmer layers. My bottoms are these Patagonia Strider Pro 5 inch shorts and I'll continue to wear shorts up until I think it's too cold to do so at which point I'll switch it up for some trekking pants. And my hat is this Patagonia Airshed running cap. I've always used a plain old cotton trucker's hat but I decided to invest in something that dries just a little bit faster. For my socks I have two pairs of crew length darn tough hiker socks one pair that'll get wet while hiking and the other stays dry for sleeping in. If I were going on a longer trip, I'd probably take three pairs of socks so that I could wash one pair of hiking socks each day. But for short weekend trips, this works totally fine for me. I like to hike in ultra lone peak fours and the ones that I have are definitely on their last leg, but I refuse to get a new pair up until they disintegrate. I do take dedicated sleep clothes this time of year because it's pretty much guaranteed that I'm gonna show up at camp soaking wet. So I'll take this Mont Bell Merino wool top and these Mont Bell synthetic tights. My active insulation of choice for my upper body is the Patagonia R1 hoodie. It's not the lightest hoodie in the world, but it's really durable and it works well in the rain, even when my jacket starts to wet out. I also love it because it's got thumb holes, which makes layering up really easy. I am starting to realize that I kind of look like a Patagonia spokesperson. My puffy is the Mont Bell Superior Down Jacket, and I've had this thing for nearly a decade and it's held up incredibly well. It does have a couple of holes in it from campfire sparks because I'm a dummy, and I might get them repaired at some point, but for now, Gorilla Tape is doing the job just fine. For my rain jacket, I like the Mont Bell Versalite. This is another piece of gear that I feel like I've had forever, and other than the hang loop falling off and the logo fading a bit, it's still going strong. To keep my head warm while I'm sleeping or on particularly chilly mornings, I bring along my Z-Pax Fleece Beanie. It's shockingly warm and it basically weighs nothing, and since my sleeping bag doesn't have a hood, it makes a really nice addition to my sleep setup. For gloves, I carry these Mont Bell liner gloves. There's nothing really special about them other than that they're light and reasonably warm. I don't really use gloves very often during three season conditions, so I don't need anything super heavy. For sunglasses, I wear knockarounds. They're cheap and you can customize them online to suit your personality. For instance, I'm boring. And up next, food. All of my food, cooking, and scented hygiene items live in a large Z-Pax food bag. I have the small one as well, but I find that the large fits in the Exodus better and results in less gaps. 
Along with my food bag, I have a Z-Pax rock sack and 40 feet or so of lash it so that I can do a bear hang. My cook setup is the Tokes 750 milliliter pot, BRS 3000 T stove, and the Tokes long handled spoon with a polish bowl. I recently switched to this setup because we were in a burn ban and I couldn't use my alcohol stove anymore. And even though it's now fall and there's no longer a burn ban in effect, I do want to continue to mess around with it and just sort of see how it performs. That said, I absolutely love my Trail Designs alcohol stove and I am sure that I will find my way back to it at some point. And don't forget a lighter. Anything that you have lying around is fine. Water filtration and storage is two cheap Essentia bottles that I reuse, as well as my Sawyer squeeze. Oh, bug in the eye. I find the squeeze is way less prone to clogging than the micro and the mini, and all I do to take care of it is just back flush it with a little bit of distilled water when I get home. I also started bringing my Knock Vecto with me again. I know I said back in February that I wasn't going to anymore, but it's just so darn convenient, especially when filtering water for a group, which is often the case for me. All right, and now one of the small stuff, starting with the bathroom kit. In here we have a little bit of toilet paper in a Ziploc bag, my deuce of spades trowel, my holy hiker bidet, some soap, and some hand sanitizer. The soap and the hand sanitizer are both in one ounce Nalgene bottles. The reason that I carry both is that soap is generally more effective and it kills things like Giardia, which alcohol won't. So this is my preferred method for washing my hands. I also have the hand sanitizer though, just because sometimes you wanna like share a bag of chips or trail mix with somebody or something like that and you don't wanna go through the whole hand washing process, but it's still a really good idea to wash your hands obviously if you're sharing food. So I like to have this with me as well. It all lives in this mountain laurel design stuff set. In terms of other hygiene items, I also have my Z-Pax toothbrush. Uh, there's some toothpaste in here and some chapstick. This actually lives in my food bag since I usually wanna put it up in a tree at night so that no critters or bears are gonna be attracted to the scent. In terms of all the other small stuff, it lives in this Z-Pax dry bag. My electronics are all in this small Ziploc freezer bag. My charging bank of choice is the Nightcore NB10000 Gen 2. It's very light and it works very well for charging. I am getting slightly annoyed with how pliny the corners are though. It tends to poke holes in the bags here, which I don't love. So that might get replaced at some point. I have an anchor wall charger, some assorted cables, and some adapters as well so that I can charge everything. My headlamp is the Nightcore NU25. It seems like a lot of people have these. Overall, it works super well and I like it. And my beacon is the Garmin InReach Messenger. Obviously, this is there for SOS, but really more than anything, it's so that I can send my location and just text back and forth with people at home. Future Tim says don't forget the AirPods. And finally, my iPhone. Unfortunately, I can't count it as worn weight just because it's in my pocket. And it's definitely raining on me. Washington. Am I right? Had to put the electronics away. It was getting pretty bad there for a second, but we're back. Up next, we have first aid and repair, which all kind of lives together. So we'll just tackle it as one item. I have a couple of bug wipes. I don't use these super often as the bugs don't normally bother me that much, especially during fall, but I do keep them in my ditty bag just in case. There are still some mosquitoes flying around and stuff like that. So you never know, I like to have them. Up next, we have a Victorinox Classic. Really, I just wanted something with some scissors on it. And this was the smallest and least pointy form factor that I could find. So I picked up one of these. It's one of the National Park editions. Uh, this one's Glacier National Park. If you're gonna buy something, it may as well be pretty to look at, right? I have a bunch of a leave and a sandwich baggie. And in this small baggie here, I have assorted band-aids, three feet of Luco tape, some really good tweezers, which are better than the ones on the Victorinox, uh, just in case I get like a big thorn or something like that. A spare O-ring for my water filter, some DCF tape, some DCF patches, patches for my Thermarest. So again, this is my sort of all-encompassing human slash gear repair kit. Oh, and there's also a safety pin in here as well. Additionally, I have 20 feet or so of extra extra line cut into two foot lengths. I keep this around in case I need to repair the line on my tent or if I wanna put it together to make a clothesline or something like that. And then my small Z-Pack stuff sack wallet, which just holds credit cards, keys, that sort of thing. And that sometimes goes in my fanny pack, just kinda depends on the day. All in all, we're looking at just a little bit over 11 pounds, uh, which isn't too bad considering some of the extra layers that I bring along and stuff like that. Certainly not the lightest kit that anybody's ever carried, but it keeps me comfortable when dealing with the rain and that sort of thing. Two items that I didn't include in this weight that may go out with me at some point this year are my Kindle. As you may know, I like to bring this out with me every now and again. This is about a half a pound, and I do like having it for those really long nights when I'm stuck in the tent in the rain. 
And something else that I've never taken with me, at least not in the last decade or so, is a set of rain pants. Actually, I did take them out in the snow once. But besides that, I almost never take rain pants of any kind. And the reason that I am considering taking them this year, at least on some occasions, is that I'm really making an effort to get out rain or shine. And as the weather cools off, I may find myself wanting something just to keep a little bit more of the rain off and keep me a bit warmer. I'll keep you updated on whether or not I actually use them. Suffice to say that for lightweight backpacking, these would not be my first choice. I actually bought them for a mountaineering trip, but it's what I have for now and I just want to see if I'm going to use them or not before I invest in a new pair. But they're heavy as shit. Also, I should note that this does not include the weight of my camera gear, simply because I think that most people that are watching this video that want to learn more about what gear to pack for fall don't care about what kind of camera stuff I'm bringing with me. But in the spirit of transparency, I will put the weight somewhere around here so that you can see what that weighs as well. If you're interested in learning about all of the stupid mistakes that led me to this particular gear setup, be sure to check out this video next.